My main message for the growers is that every time we plant an orchard, it's a 20-year commitment, and so we really need to be thinking 20 years out. And the basic question is, what will be the technologies, uh, how will the orchards look that are profitable 20 years from now? And we need to try to think of that now. And I outlined about uh, five or six major points that I think are key to what orchards would look like 20 years from now. Using my crystal ball, you know, I was pro proposing that these orchards would be a certain density, which uh, currently looks to us from the economic analysis we're doing to be somewhere around 1,000 to 1,300 trees per acre. So if you're within that sort of um, density window, how can you best train the trees? And what we're proposing is a system that is simple for the growers to plant, but is very, very productive. We call it the tall spindle system. But it looks forward to trying to uh, be a system that growers could take advantage of future machines that can reduce labor costs in orchards. Right now, we have several pretty interesting machines that help reduce pruning costs. But the big issue is the harvest cost, which represent fully a third of all labor costs in the orchard. And so I propose uh, some ideas about harvesting that um, I think could help reduce labor costs. I'm pretty enthused about two very simple machines that have been developed around the world that are not so much based on fancy machinery to transport fruit, but are based upon helping the individual human picker be more efficient. I'm pretty enthused about a machine called the Waffler machine that I think maybe if I were to predict uh, five years from now, many Washington growers will have this machine. But the overall package, when you put it together of uh, this sort of high density orchard with a very simple pruning and training scheme in a vertical shape that has um, very you know, thin canopy dimensions, no more than about four or five feet wide. When you couple that with some mechanical assist devices, could potentially reduce labor costs by almost 50%. And that's the challenge I placed for the Washington growers that the first major grower that can manage orchards with the number of hours that I've allocated, basically around 150 hours per acre per year, would win a steak dinner. But if you, beyond just that competition, it's the ability to marry this uh, system of very high yield with lower cost that has an impact on profitability. And that's, I guess, the biggest part of my message is that when you look at 20-year life of an orchard and the expected maximum profitability, we can improve that by about 30%, putting all the package of these five or six technologies together in the orchards of the future. Many times this new technology comes in and it seems like it's really great because it's new and it's fun and exciting, but from a business standpoint, you have to look at the cost-benefit ratio, and I think every business needs to do that. And there's been too little of that in the apple industry. Some technologies um, are bells and whistles, but they don't really add any benefit to the bottom line. Now specifically, my caution relates to these harvest machines because they're not going to be able to improve labor efficiency like a grain combine did. A grain combine could replace hundreds of workers, but these machines only have small incremental improvement in labor efficiency, maybe 20%, maybe 30%. Therefore, the cost of the machine becomes critical on whether you should adopt it. And it's only a caution. I think all growers are smart enough. They'll end up making those calculations. And the machine that is cost effective will win out. Mm 